Hey guys, how you doing? Joe here. I'm with some new friends. We're with some people from Michigan and Kenosha, Wisconsin. Wisconsin over here. You guys have heard me talk about my top coat from UGQ Outdoors. These two gentlemen work for them and own them. When the, work, That's right. I'm yep, Paul. work for them and own them. Paul and Chad. Chad and Dan Becker from. Dan Becker Outdoors, <laughs> the YouTube channel. So today's the, the the first time I'm ever gonna go hammock camping in the winter time. These guys have promised me that they're gonna set me up with a nice hammock and keep me warm. This is true. That's sure. the goal. Uh, we'll see. So we're in, in the upper peninsula of Michigan right now. There's a lot of snow. We're gonna get going. We got a snowshoe hike to go, and it's 2:45. We have light till about 4:45. How, how, often, how often do you put on snowshoes? Dude, like once or twice a week. All the time. <laughs> Bam. So we've found a spot down by the river. We're all going to live in hammocks down by the river. Isn't that song? Uh, it's like a Chris Farley sketch as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. A little bit of snow, but not as much as we just walked through. Why, right. does it, why does it seem like you're lording over us? I am. I've been dumb. <laughs> Have to ring out my oh my. Should I calm first? No. Um, okay, so we'll probably do a spot here from this tree to that tree, and then one from there to there, and then one from right here to that tree. So that way we block Paul off and he stays up there by himself. Perfect. Should okay, be good. I need help though because I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing at all. Yeah, we'll hook you up, man. Don't worry about it. Cool. Are you serious? <laughs> I can't do this. This is getting to be too much. Listen, I have camped, all right? I've seen some stuff. <laughs> I had to stick up my foot in my buddy's armpit before, so that's something. All right, so I didn't lose it. Okay, that's that, and that's that. So we got, what do we have here? Uh, bought, uh, underquilt. Underquilt, right. And hammock. Dream hammock. Yep. Dream hammock. And then I, so these are new to me. Uh, Chad brought me them. Uh, that they, they made them. You guys sell these? So, yeah, we make those, but that's made by a company called Dream Hammock. Okay, so hammock is. Dream Hammock is made by Dream Hammock. We partner with. UGQ is the top quilt and underquilt. Um, so hopefully, it will stay warm. I also have my top quilt that I already had in my pack. I gotta get that out. So I'm gonna have to, I gotta open up all these little packages in here. Yeah, you gotta show me the whole deal, bro. This is like brand new, so it's literally not even been open. Okay. So it's gonna be your tree straps and your elephant trunks, which is gonna hook on to the fixed end of the hammock, um, and then your carabiner just for strapping around the tree. Elephant, tusk, and fish scales. Trunk, elephant trunk. <laughs> got you. So we got a nice spot here, right by the river. In with the cedars, in with the red squirrels. Look at these guys already already all set up up there. You got it. Jeez, you what you're doing. I don't know. So what are you doing? Lashing it through. That might be wrong. I feel like two was enough. I don't know why they had to go and put three on there. Just to make it more confusing for you. Well, I do get confused easily. No, nope, that's not right. We gotta go back this way. Alright. That's tight, it's good. Yeah, normally this would be a lot quicker if this wasn't all like, you know, brand new in the package. Yeah, if you would have set it up properly before you came out. Well, let's just not forget that Dan still had tags on his snowshoes. So, <laughs> so why, say it again, you're not gonna use a carabiner? So, because this has a sawn loop on it. Okay. Um, so it does the exact same thing. Okay, so no carabiners you don't need to use. And how high do you know up to, to go? Uh, how do you depends, know how high to depends go? Depends on, on the slant and the distance between the tree and all that. So this is pretty level. Um, but basically once we get it dialed in, am I going that tree or this tree? That tree. <laughs> um, so once we get it dialed in, then I will kind of adjust the height on it. Um, but we won't really know until we get the hammock set up. Okay. <laughs> no, perfect. <laughs> Obviously, gonna have to adjust these straps a little bit shorter. But that See, that's be... a simple setup. Done. I like that. And then obviously, you gotta adjust the 
strap length. Right, like a normal buckle. Right, and then when you're ready to finish this, you just push it back through to lock it. And then we're going to adjust this side. Yeah, I worked up a sweat. Just, um, just getting in? Now you're going to be cold. Well, That's it, done. Hmm. I'll be sleeping on the ground, I guess. Good thing I brought my, <laughs> good thing I brought my normal setup. <laughs> uh, Paul's woke up on the ground before. Oh, no. Okay, so... What? Oh, right, that was your buddy. That was your buddy. So a little trick that we use for setting in the hammock um, angles and everything. So what you're going to do is take your finger and thumb, thumb, and you want your finger to be pointing level. And this hammock suspension should be touching both your finger and your thumb. So right now you can see it's not. So you actually raise this strap up um, and lengthen it a little bit so we get a steeper angle. Understood. I did not know that. That will probably make all the difference in the world for me. So and then the other thing um, is that you should have. Uh, about this much slack in your hammock ridge line. Okay. So if you can't if you can't twist this, if it should be laying, than... it should be laying straight, but you should be able to twist it about like that um, with with nothing in it. Right, with nothing in it. And so if that's tighter than that, it's too tight. If it's tighter than that, it's too tight, and otherwise you'll see it, and it'll be sagging way down. It's too loose. Once you get in, oh, okay, I got you. Yep. Right. So okay. you want it you want it when it's set up right, it'll be about this tight, which. This one would work at this angle, but I am going to adjust it just a little bit more to get that, that right pitch. Right. Um, but it's pretty close. Cool. The nice thing is once you get this, once you do it a couple times, it'll be pretty easy on, on the setup. Don't look at me tilting it slightly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's okay. pretty good. I'm going to tighten it just a hair more, but other than that, it should be solid. So, and then as far as how high it is off the ground, that's fine? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, depending on what time of year it is if it if you're expecting a lot of snow you don't want to be too close because it could build up underneath you and start making contact with your undercoat or hammock or whatever right um so i don't know i usually set mine up about a foot and a half to two feet off the ground knowing that once i get in obviously i'm going to sag yeah. down some um cool well, this is pretty close i'd be i'd be pretty happy with that there's zips on both right correct super lightweight and then yeah, I've never I've never done any winter camping in a hammock before. I know people do it up to like negative forty. I've heard people go to this meetup called the Frozen Butt Hang, mm -hmm. but uh, I've never done it. So these guys are promising a warm night's sleep. Watch your knife too. It's obviously lightweight fabric. All right. All right. So what am I doing here? All right. So right now we're checking the angle of the hammock to make sure that you've got the right pitch, the right lay. Obviously, I have to lay in an asymmetrical. Yep, so off. you're going to want your feet all the way in this corner, and then your shoulder is going to be all the way over in this corner. So even farther sideways? Yep. Yeah, like that? Yep. So oh, wow. See how flat you are now? Yeah, I do. So, and then obviously you're going to have the underquilt that's going to cover the full length, and it's going to come up past your shoulders. It'll, it'll clip in here, and then it'll come up to about here. Okay. Um, so that's going to give you full coverage all the way around. So, uh, should I be down farther, or is this exactly where I Wherever you're comfortable. Because the nice thing about the underquilt is it's fully adjustable, so I can actually slide, slide it, it all the way to this end or all the way to this end or right in the middle. Right. You can lift it to make it tighter. You can open up both ends to get a draft underneath if you get a little too hot. Thanks. Okay, so that's good then. Right? Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Okay, cool. I'd be happy with it. Nice. Well, it works for me. So, so the next thing that you would do is you would put your top quilt in here just to give some weight to it while we're suspending the under quilt. Um, and then we'll make the tarp the last step. So that's one of the primary differences between hammock camping and tent camping. If you're out hiking a long day and it's raining, um, hold on, Dan. Is he serious right now? <laughs> Dan, we're filming an important video down here. We're shooting a documentary. Anyways, um, if it's raining, you're forced to set up outside of the tent in the rain. Whereas in a hammock setup, you can pitch your tarp up first and the rest of your setup is done underneath shelter, which makes a huge difference, especially after a long day, you're not soaking wet. But is my head at the white tag or what? Yeah, your head is, your head is at the white tag. That is correct. <laughs> so, yep, yeah, so the next step's gonna be to get your top quilt just laid in here okay. for some weight. Let's and then it. we'll get the under quilt suspended and then we'll string up the tarp. And the tarp is actually pretty cool. It's uh, enclosed, like a tent. Right. 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 Right, Joe. 
So in your hand is what? That's the under quilt? Correct. And that's good for zero degrees Fahrenheit? Minus 18 Celsius. Okay, same with this, right? Right. Which is the top quilt. <laughs> it's inch. Okay. So that goes in. Other side. And what so, is the purpose of it? Just for a little bit of weight? Yeah, it just helps get the undercoat on, put some weight in the hammock. Okay. So here I've got the, so this is the foot end and that's what Dan was goofing about. We actually put a white tab in the top and the head end to identify head end from foot end. And you'll see in a minute why that's important. Man, that looks warm. So this will actually literally just, wow. That's it. That's it. It's all the setup. Super easy. Okay. And then we're going to clip this up. Same way. So, and I always just do it right on the front at first. Don't mind your tag. Um, and then basically we just pop it down and throw the hammock and everything inside just it. Just tuck it in kind of thing. Oh, 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 snap. So that's where the weight comes in handy. Okay. Is getting that all to lay. Oh man, that looks warm. Inside. So you've got multiple adjustments here. So this has actually got a draft collar on the end, and that will actually fill all the voids of the gathered end when it's all cinched up. And that's in the foot. Right. Okay. Yep, so that'll fill all the voids so that once this is set up properly, you won't have any drafts coming in the foot end. Right. Um, and then it also has one down at the head end. Same thing. Um, so once this is all the way dialed in, that will actually seal all the drafts around all the creases of the hammock, um, which obviously in this environment is ideal to not have any drafts coming under your bottom. Do you use a pillow normally in yours or no? Uh, I Sometimes. Um, if, it's, if it's warm out, I don't, but I actually have a down pillow that we made um, that I use for the hammock that actually has, use a press knot and just tie it onto your ridge line. That's cool. And that way you can have it like pushed up out of the way or then pull it down where you want it Got on you. some shot cord. This is equipped with a three-way suspension. You've got a primary, a secondary, and then a head and foot draw. Um, so the primary, with primary's purposes, it runs the full length of the underquilt. And what that does is it creates lift. So that will actually take and lift the entire underquilt up, which is good, you know, if it's cold weather, you want it to be a little bit more tight to your body. Um, if it's a little warmer, you can drop it down and get some breeze underneath. The secondary, this is your positioning suspension. Um, this will position the underquilt farther that way or up towards this end, and it will also lengthen out the underquilt. So if I were to pull this, it will eliminate all that scrunching effect. Got you. So if I do it on both sides, it'll elongate the entire underquilt just to give you a little bit more room, but also doubles as a positioning. And then the head and foot draw is pretty self-explanatory. That just yeah cinches up the end like a sleeping bag right so if you which is really nice if you've got an oversized quilt and it's not as cold as you expected it to be you can get a nice breeze under your back and cool you off pretty quick that makes sense cool so that's it for that so do you think you think we should pitch out that or no that's if you want to yeah i don't know we can we gotta I, figure I, out how we're gonna get it in the ground yeah i'll do a snow anchor yeah, I mean, if you want, we can do one on each side, and then that will uh, balloon this out. It makes it easier for getting it out because it'll want to sit like this. I'll probably need that for the first time, I imagine. If I don't fall over this thing, we'll be doing good. Um, so really, in a hammock, you're not as concerned about drafts, obviously, because you're covered from the entire bottom. So you only really need it to cover just past your shoulders because this is doing the rest. Because when you're in here, I mean, look at how high this is sitting. Right. Your shoulder didn't come to but here, and then over here on this side, you had, you know, eight inches of coverage. So this is wrapping, basically. Right, that's, that's wrapping yeah. you from the bottom and yep. the sides. And then the top quilt at that point is just gravy. I mean, it's just going to help seal in the rest of the heat. And that top quilt has a foot box and all that jazz, yep. too. Insulated foot box. This also has a draft collar. Yep. Um, dual head draw, so you can pull it in the center or on the ends if you want. Yep. So your first quilt had just the end draw. Right. Um, so the new ones we actually came out with have it both in the center or the end. So if, you want, if you're someone that wants to pull it in the middle, um, you know, a lot of people like that. So that's why we introduced both. No, it's and slick. This one also has the dynamic tension control, which is this system that runs through the hem. It's a piece of flat 
quarter inch elastic webbing um, and that basically just hugs it much tighter to your body gives you more of that sleeping bag feel with less weight and more packable right so this is to set up the tarp and you've got a fancy ridge line on this one too don't you yep so this is the continuous ridge line with loop aliens um, so this is going to be the fixed end so this is the end that we just literally wrap around and, and lock it what is a loop alien it's this thing loop alien okay it's just a, it's a thing, man. It's the thing that you use to hook your tarp up. <laughs> Come on, Joe. <laughs> so this side's super simple. Not to be, sorry, go ahead. Make a loop, put it through, lock it on. Okay. So that's it. And then we're going to go down to the pulley end. I know once you figure it out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how it works. Okay, so this is now locked in place roughly where we want it. So I'm just gonna take this, put a loop in it, slide it through, lock it on over top. Right. And now this becomes a pulley where I can literally just pull this and it tightens the whole ridge line. And then I'd lock it in place right there. Ooh, like a taut line hitch on steel. And now it's locked. Nice. And it's not getting loose ever. Cool. Um, and then obviously once you want to loosen it, you just pull that out and now it's loose. What is that, AM steel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah 1.75 millimeter. So this is literally just going to clip in there. Oh man, am I good or am I good? Yeah, that was a pretty good eyeball right there. So just by care beaters? Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. And then this is obviously a yeah, Prusik. Prusik, so pull it under tension. Mm -hmm. Good to go. Oh my. It's got doors. So that's super tight. It's got doors. Oh snap. Welcome to the luxury inn. It's not even in there. Wait, 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 I got it. Wait. <laughs> Run. So this UGQ tarp is pretty slick. They've got cord locks uh, built right in. So you're going in the big side from underneath and then going back down through. Oh, I messed up my cordage. <laughs> going back down through. Now when you want to pull it out, you can tension it or loosen it with the stakes. So I'm going to use snow stakes for this because going pounding into the ground is not going to work. What kind of pitch, what kind of angle am I looking for? Right about there? Yeah, that looks good. Yeah? Yeah. So I'll wrap the stake in cordage and literally just bury it in the snow. Stomp on it, and that's not going anywhere. And again, I can loosen it, tighten it right back up. Look at that, that's so slick. All right. I gotta get some snow anchors now. Okay, so we're pretty much set up. Look at how slick this thing is, man. This is completely closed in. And I'll try with saying if I brought these these guy lines in a bit, I could get more um, room on this side coming out. See how the, the ends are kind of pulled in, but that's fine because I do have the room on the sides of my hammock. And I kind of want it there for the winter time. So I'm gonna just finish this up and I'll show you. But it is it's so cool, man. You're like that's enclosed, you know what I mean? That's a shelter now, that's not just a hammock. Yeah, just a floating palace. Look at that. We call it the winter dream. All right, so I just gotta tighten up my 
Yep, so it just... Yeah, just tighten up on one end. Apple right. All right, got you. So then that's done. The snow anchor's in there. And then when I want to get out, or in, bam. All right, guys, let's take... Actually, do you want to show them the, the, the hiking pole or the, the pole setup thing to, to widen it? You want to just... You can just show them with your hands. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. fine, yeah. Um, you ready? Yeah, like what it's for. And uh, so... This is what's called a um, panel pole, and we actually make a pole kit for this where it's basically just a piece of aluminum tubing, like a tent pole. Um, and this is basically going to run up and over the ridge line and connect to the other side, and that will balloon this up just to create more internal volume for, for your experience inside. Right, more. so that's that, that pull out is mirrored on the other side. The pole right, goes yep. over the top and just bows it right out. Right, so you can also use trekking poles too, which most people are already carrying when they're out hiking or backpacking. Right. Um, and you just run it over top of the ridge line and then your, your trekking pole is going to come out straight and then you just attach a piece of cord with a toggle or whatever you have um, or just tie a knot to it and that works just as good. Here, I'm gonna, can you just pull it again for me? Yeah, I'll pull full size. Yeah, see the, you, like you can live in that. Look at, look at the space in there now. That's just one side. Yeah, exactly. Cool, thanks. All right, let's go on inside guys and see the setup. So you saw me unsnap this, this is all set up. This gets open now, right? And I've got... I'm completely enclosed in here. I've got all this down warmth, all this shelter. It could be a snowstorm out there and I'd be fine in here. Pretty cool. I don't know that I'll pull these... Yeah, I don't think I will. I've already done enough snow, snow anchors today. We'll, we'll see. We'll leave this, but... I'm excited to use this. So we're literally running out of light. It's 4.30. There's not going to be light past 5 no matter what. And no, no one has got a single piece of firewood. There has been no uh, fire spot picked out. Nothing like that. So we, uh, yeah, I'm going to kick it into high drive and start busting out some firewood. Graceful as ever. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I feel like I'm in Inception. In Cameron Shin. In Cameron Shin. In, in, yep, in Film Shin. introduce you to my good friend here, my new friend. This is Joe. Joe Robinette. Robin, Robinette or Robinette? Robinette. 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 He's got a, a small YouTube channel. He asked me to <laughs> come along because he called me this morning. He's like, Dan, you know, I'm really hurting for subscribers. He's like, can you go winter camping with you? Right, like, buddy, you know, I'm, I'm like, Fine. So we're here. Thanks, and, Dan. Uh, I really appreciate it. <laughs> Saved my life, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stoked to be with this guy. If you don't know who he is, by now you haven't you haven't been living. So Dan Becker. No, nope. Dan Becker has a YouTube channel. Yes, sir. Yep. Called Dan Becker. Yeah, Dan Becker. There Check you it go. Out. Thanks. <laughs> well, there's not much in the general vicinity, but we got this dead piece. Hopefully, this is pretty dry, even though it's not very dead standing. Should be good. It's pretty hard wood, I think. Oops. Ah. I think it's dry. Joe showed you how to do snow anchors. I showed him how to set up the tarp. <laughs> I'm a loose kid. Come on. Bam, son. Damn, yeah. Snowy Three feet of snow. Oh, I brought a fire log. Did ya? No. Dirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's why your backpack was so heavy. Check, check. You grab those things. 
steak tartare. This will keep the bugs away. All yeah. That smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Mosquitoes. Yeah. Roaches. <laughs> All right. A lot of spring to them. Yep. What did Dan bring that green tree over here? <laughs> yeah, that was Dan's. Dan's contribution. <laughs> That's a solid piece of wood. Wow, yeah. sounds it. Let yeah. me know if you want me to take a turn. Well, anytime you feel up for it. Just volunteer. Let's do it. Woo! Lose some layers now. Dan. We got we got uh, flashlight wars going on here. We were luckily okay. Ooh, somebody just, somebody just seized. <laughs> we have enough birch bark here to start a fire, so that's good. We got some split stuff, some stuff split down because a lot of our twigs uh, were wet on the outside with ice. Got a good base here. Probably just bunch this up and let her go. It's a little icy and wet on the outside, but again, birch bark is amazing. And the fact that it'll burn even when wet. Okay. Now what do we do? Someone hurry. Uh take two. That birch tree's peeling really nice up there too. See, you know, birch, the good thing is it'll burn even though it's wet. <laughs> <laughs> it's burning, I swear. Winter fires. It's fun. full of oil. Yeah, so much oil. Yeah, like you would never want to put this underneath something you're cooking on a grill or something, it'll be very oily. They are popping. So you paddle too, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love it. Yeah. It's my favorite thing. It's canoe, kayak? I have a hybrid kind of thing. It's called a pack boat and it's like an open top kayak. Okay. So basically I paddle it with a with a kayak paddle. Uh-huh. And yeah, I saw the Warner sticker on your right. paddle there. Yeah, so it's uh I can get in and out of it easily. It weighs 26 pounds. I portage it everywhere. Yeah, 26, that's pounds. Light. 26 pounds. Yeah, it has a removable carbon fiber yoke. It's awesome. Yeah. Look at the light on my radio. I got my frame rate. I mean, I've, I've shoot at 24 and 50 and 150. Yeah, manual. Yeah. I keep my ice on auto though because I can't figure ice out. Yeah. You know what's crazy about filming outside is like the sun will go behind a cloud and drastically change the way things oh, look. Oh, dude. Yeah. Well, we've been hanging out. It's, uh, it's late at night. What time is it, boys? What time is it? About 7.15. There you go, 7.15. That is not late. <laughs> is it really? I don't have a clue. It's 8.04. It's, it's a little bit better, a little bit better. Uh, it feels like midnight. It feels like midnight. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Just just chatting here, having a good time by the fire. Um, <laughs> been melting snow. Already cooked up some food. i melt some more snow here. Oh look, green snow already. <laughs> Are you gonna tuck him in? You, you don't want that on film? Are you gonna come tuck me into bed? Yeah, 100%. Nice. Alright boys. Pillow turned down? Yes. 
Uh, actually, down jacket turned into a pillow turned down. Down, turn, down jacket turned into a pillow turned down service. <laughs> All right, good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night man. Wish me luck. Hopefully, I can stay warm. I am looking forward to this. Nice and cozy in here. Okay, I want to work my way into this cocoon of warmth, and I'll get back with you when I'm laying in there. Well, I'm all in here. What's that? Oh, just talking to the camera. Oh, sorry. That's all right. It happens. Snug as a bug. See, you can see I'm laying asymmetrical. There's the end there, laying off to the side. I'm gonna do the bug net up because these guys are saying that I can get a little bit more warmth that way, so why not? But I'm feeling good. It's uh, it was cold getting into here, but after about like 30 seconds, I could start to feel the warmth already coming coming in, and it is nice and warm. I'm very comfortable. So we'll see how she goes. We'll see how I fare in the in the hammock of warmth. I'll get with you guys in the morning, or if I'm freezing in the middle of the night, I'll, I'll let you know that too. But uh, have a good night, and I will see you sometime soon. Well, as you can hear, I'm still in bed. People are working out there, sawing away. But I just don't want to get over to this cozy, comfortable cocoon of warmth. This is the best night's sleep I ever had in a hammock my whole life. Uh, I stay completely warm, stay completely comfortable. My only issue is that I did not bring a pee bottle into the hammock with me. I had to get up about three or four times, but other than that, man, I uh, I slept like a baby. And it, it, the thought of getting out of this into the cold winter is not <laughs> is not appealing. So I'm gonna let other people cut the wood while I lay in here. <laughs> not answering. There you go. That's what I was waiting for. All right, I will. Uh, I'll get up. I think I do need to set up this hammock once to here with these guys here to, to give me pointers and, and and so I can have it down because I really want to be able to use this in the future. And um, I know myself and setting up things like this is not my forte, but we'll get it down before we leave. Anyways, breakfast to come soon. Now for the cold part, putting the old boots on. All right, looking pretty good, man. It's not that cold, eh? No, it's not. Especially when you've been working for... Right. Well, that only took me like one minute. I just did that right now. Let's get that long. <laughs> nice. Oh, man. Where's this beaver? You have to go oh, my goodness. Go That's a full-grown dog. I thought it was a baby black bear. Oh my goodness, dude. I've never seen a beaver that big. It looks like a bear from here. Oh, he's gone. He heard us. Here we are all. Yeah. Dirt. Wow, that was big. That was big. So we're at this river. It just kind of solidifies right there in the... Water keeps pushing right underneath it, so. Why don't you go down there and get a better shot? Yeah, I'm not going for a swim, no. No, not today. <laughs> There's beauty out, though, eh? Gotta love northern Michigan. I always love camping here. All right, I gotta get some more clothes on now. <laughs> Thank you.
I think I'm gonna pop off the, the front of this and, and open it up so I can access my stuff a little bit better. What that's going to entail is digging out these snow stakes. You can get a really good view of it here. And it was, it was a very enjoyable night's sleep, I'll tell you that much. It really was. Use this as a, as a seat now. I'll just hang out. Not too shabby. I do gotta put on my gaiters. Got a little bit of snow in my boots, walking around. For these short boots, I, I do like the short boots now for winter. I used to wear these big long pack boots, keep the snow out. But for hiking and snowshoeing, these short boots do the trick way better. And to mitigate the snow getting down into my sh into my leg and my pants and my shoes, I use these gaiters and they work amazingly. I know. It's so that sweet. Hammock even looks good with it. Is it, uh, you think it, it sagged it all in the middle of the night or you think it's good? Uh, it, it might have some. So what do I do to fix that? I tension here or no? Yeah, I mean, here's here's what I've learned. Um, if you if you slept good in the way that it was last night. I did. I would do everything I could to not adjust it. So even if this is sagging a little bit, part of that's probably because your phone's weighing it down. But the other thing is, is that you woke up comfortable, which means it's going to be in the same position when you go to sleep. So, okay. I really, I wouldn't even mess with it. Got you. The only time I would is, like, if you toss and turn a lot or you had tight spots on the back of your calves or something like that, those are all indicators of improper setup. No, it was all on point. So, I would just leave it. Got you. In that case. But then again, I had a zero degree set, and it was yeah probably was overkill for last night. I was toasty all night, so just had a couple of cold spots. But <laughs> How did you sleep? <laughs> Dude, Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's good, yeah. Nice. Nice and warm. Nice. So where's that beaver? Oh my. Oh, still over there. Go yeah, it it's out. big. It's like a bear. It's like a small bear. Good, like 35, 40 pounds. Easily. Big. Well, there's an opening down there, but you see him? It looks like a small bear. There, oh, wow. There's a really good opening. Yeah, if you walk, follow our trail down yonder, over the hill. There's a little creek you got across. I know, right? It's not. <laughs> I've, ne I've never seen a beaver that big, like, go ever. On, go that way, Dan. There's a big opening over there. <laughs> Just go. Go, Dan. Go, Dan. Why are you filming in black and white? <laughs> you guys cool if I go check out your setups? Do it, man. Go for it. Right, right up there. there. Yeah, let me go put some stuff away real quick. Up the hill. Oh, my goodness. What is happening? You can't really see much of mine. No, you're, you're, you're camouflaged in the snow. Like John Cena. Yep. So that's an 11 foot? That's a 12 foot. That's a 12 foot. I have what? An 11 foot. 11 foot. Oh, understood. So everybody's in a hammock this trip. Oh look, there's a little, little squirrel home. That's probably the squirrel that ran across your ridge line lives in there. Yeah. He, meanwhile, he's saying... This one has the zipper closure on it. Okay. Yeah, got you. That's what I'm saying. I got pelted with Yeah, you did. Look at that. It's that squirrel again. What setup is this one? This is mine. I was Ooh. toasted warm. I like all my stuff to match somewhat. Yeah, I just had a 20 degree set last night, so I don't want to get down to. Maybe like, it was only like down to maybe 25. 25, yeah. Maybe. yeah. Oh, you got the Tyvek, nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Ground sheet, and then a trash compactor bag over there for 
keeping all my down stuff in my pack. Very cool. These tarps are super lightweight too, eh? Yeah. Yeah, that's about uh, 14 ounce. That tarp, the tarp, the tarp itself is about 14 ounce. That's really light. Good size coverage, two 12 foot ridge line. Yeah, nice and taut. Yeah, do the yeah, snow, do the snow anchor trick. Oh yes, yes, got to do that in the winter time, eh? You yeah. can pull these real tight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is it called? What is it? Not canted. Cantonary cut. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like a decelerating, accelerating curve. Right. It takes all the slack out of the fabric when you tighten it. Exactly. Suspension bridge. I knew that. Decelerating, excavating. Ex decelerating, like ex excavating, <laughs> something or other. Oh, that's a pretty cool view down there in the camp, too. Yeah, it's a nice little camp. Yeah, it is. I thought some people were walking up on us a while ago. So did I. There was something that was walking through here. Yep. Really? I thought it was you coming down the hill. Well, I thought I heard. Uh, Probably that 50 pound beaver. 50 pound beaver. <laughs> that was a big beaver. <laughs> I thought about that in the middle of the night. I'm like, I hope it doesn't snow. How are your snowshoes? I'll talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't like snowshoes. And this is Dan Becker's setup, Dan Becker. Dan Becker's setup. Ooh, I like the color of the underquilt. Yeah, thank you. you got what uh, Tripper's quilt is, but it's the green pattern. Slick. You're all frosted, eh? Oh, you got ice, bro. Yeah. I see. That's nice. Why did these guys? Why? Why does these two uh, bottom quilts seem more puffy than mine? Oh, we put more in it. Oh, okay. You just leave me a little yeah. skinny guy to. You give me like an extra ounce, right? Ounce. Of... Uh, I think I gave you like three or four ounces because because how much you wine the first time. <laughs> 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 So you can do that on both sides and that will keep keep it in place. That's a slick setup. I'd really do like that white. Top quilt Dude, we already signed you one, okay? Well, you know what? I, how, many, how many more you want from me? Four. We're baking greasing up this pot so we can use it to scramble some eggs in. We got bacon and eggs. And a fogged up lens. You got an afro on your face, dude. <laughs> okay, rub it in. You're getting beard hair in our bacon. <laughs> <laughs> it's not dandruff, it's salt. <laughs> How many? <laughs> All right, drop the eggs in now. That's it. We got it. We got it. Don't put it on the fire. Don't put it on the fire. Why? We got to get the eggs in there. Oh, oh, no. Like with the spatula. Spatula? Like crack it and then Why one hand. Why would you cook at home? Dude, would you? I swear to God, I want to throw all of you in this fire right now. That is not an egg cracker. Sorry, Dad. What? Make sure you dispose of the shells properly. Oh, kill your shoulder. Don't get... What? What? It's biodegradable. Dude. Over your shoulder. I swear. Do you see why I bring him, Joe? I'm this just really amused right now. This is all fun. This is all... Normally, I'm getting my chops busted, so it's good. It's what you like. It's what I like. How many uh, people does it take to scramble some eggs? You got shell in there. Are you kidding There's me? There's no shell oh. in there. Dan Becker. There's no shell. It's on your thumb. Get it. <sighs> now it's in your eye. Dude, one hand, one hand crash. A little bit more for good measure. <laughs> this guy's so fancy. You ever seen that video? Yes, everyone has. Oh, Dan apparently hasn't. It's like, what are you doing? I don't know what you're doing. Oh my goodness. Please, sir. No. No, you didn't. There's two more eggs. I didn't. <laughs> Heck yeah, that's fine. No, no, no we cracked them. Here, I don't even want them. Somebody else eat them. We put we, them all in. No, we cracked all the eggs. Oh, we did? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that looks good. I'm actually like, look out. Look out. I need a pine needle for garnishing. Where's that Lari's? I didn't bring it. If you want some, I don't know if you want it. Mm. Want no. some spice. Of course I do. Yeah, alright. I put salt and pepper on it. You guys watch me do it. No, if you gotta get up, don't worry about it. No, no, it's fine, man. You good? What is Banson? Dude, I'm gonna eat. What are you gonna do? What do you want? Just saying. Paul's gonna take care of a bunch of Nancy's. Here you go. <laughs> What do you mean? a tiny I bit of a kick to it. I salt the What? Water. You weren't kidding. No, I wasn't kidding. That's awesome. You didn't know that? Bam, son. Yeah. <laughs>
You know, boys? I just like to be like a supervisor, you know? I'm just hoping. These eggs are phenomenal, really. Dude, that, I'm not going to lie, and this just isn't because I'm saying this, but this spice is, is incredible. Bring it home. It's for real good. What's it called? Bam, son. Bam! Spice rub. It's really good. I mean, he can, you can have it. There's a moose chasing a bear over there. He's getting on the camera. <laughs> moose chasing a bear. Oh, yeah. Two beavers. Two beavers. Oh. No, really? Same size. Maybe we'll watch beaver yeah. porn. Yeah, you're right. They are huge. <laughs> See them, Joe? No, I'm looking at these squirrels. Oh. I don't care about your beaver. Weird. <laughs> that bacon. He is eating that bacon. You're right. Why, why is there bacon down there? Well, I threw him a piece of bacon. That's bacon abuse. No, it's rabid squirrel time now. Make sure that this other piece doesn't get thrown down there. That was for the squirrels, Chad. What are you talking about? I don't know, Becca. <laughs> no, that's a bear. That's a bear. <laughs> yeah, right. The aquatic bears. <laughs> You guys see the bears? Oh, wow, look at those. Are those brown bears? I think black so. Bears. I think uh, black. <whistles> They're really big. Oh, look at you guys with your big lenses. It's cold out. So, where are we going? What are we going to do? We're going to go see uh, the lower falls here at Tequamanon. Tequamanon Falls. See some more woods with a lot of snow and. Whatever else we can find. Maybe some more beaver. Maybe some beaver. That was weird, man. That was really strange. <laughs> Lost Dan. We're gonna go check out the falls, I think. Oh, we wanted some me time. So we're gonna go check out some really cool waterfall. It's about a half a mile hike. Look at this. Yeah, it's probably got a ton of water right underneath yeah, it. I was gonna say it might be wet. It's well, pretty. If you're in a hammock. If you're in a hammock, all ultimate survival hammock, bushcraft survival. Yeah, just as long as you have the hammock and a full tarp set up. Right, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Oh, she's a little wet. That does not get any more color. <laughs> water under there? It's just a bit. Well, I think where we're camped, where you guys are camped, is extremely oh. wet, too. I agree. Yeah, yeah well, this hasn't this been down water. long. There's no <laughs> wet ground there. Yeah, it's like it definitely is like a cedary swamp type of thing. There's, that's good firewood right there. We should probably just get some of that. Bring it, put it in your pocket. There you go. That'll make or break it. Yeah, this, uh, this stuff's great to <laughs> eat. No, <I'm... laughs> you can whittle another spatula. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn! <laughs> Nothing? Nothing? Alright. Yeah, if there's anything else you need to know about, this is uh, <laughs> some sort of pine. Um, I'm gonna go with Michigan pine. Yep. Michigan. Uh, and this is all What's edible the smell right here. What's the Latin it's name? It's super good. It's got a real piney flavor. What was the Latin name? Uh, Panitos mm -hmm. Michiganos. Michiganos. Here. We gotta keep going in like Snow's getting deeper. Yay. Don't slip down there. Oh, don't slip down there? No, nope, don't slip down okay. there. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, went that way. That's, all, that's all she wrote, if you do. Dan Becker. Dan Becker. <laughs> yeah, who, whose idea was it to not wear snowshoes? It was definitely not mine. <laughs> I bought snowshoes specifically for this trip. Look at this. Do you know what this is? Do you know what this little guy is? It's a little hemlock. A little hemlock guy. What's happening? All it right. fell. Goodbye. I don't know if you know, but Dan's actual channel name is Super Duper Explorer Dan. Right. <laughs> outdoor Adventures. Outdoor Adventures <laughs> in the outdoors. At first, I was afraid. I was petrified. 
Is it recording? It's recording. Well, so we got to get up there. There's some stairs we found on the trail, but <laughs> this all looks solid. And Chad's like, that's probably water. I stepped on it and there was an earthquake. So we, I think we can jump across. I'm going to do it and just see what happens. Oh, oh, one foot in. One foot, one one foot, foot wasn't so bad. Okay. So you want me to throw the camera to yeah. you? Or? Throw the throwing throw is good, it. yeah. Actually, um, well, from here, Should we can just easy. go on the rocks and we're good, so. <laughs> you take the high ground, I'll take the low ground. Yeah, it's recording. Just go ahead and flip it around on me. Oh, wait, go, oh, action. Action, go, oh, leap. Oh, my left, my right foot almost went in. Is that what that is? Oh my goodness. I cannot believe this is happening right now. Hello, going over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the boat launch. Is that what that is? Yeah, that's for getting your uh, kayaks and canoes down to the water. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. That was it's nice. When you ride them down. It's a you winter. A, is this a, like a boulder walk? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, be careful. Yeah. Yeah, the safe route would have been to just go on the bridge up that way. It's on. Yeah, that's craziness. I thought like uh, I thought this was a slide at first. <laughs> In winter, it is. Oh, in this water. oh my goodness! That's nuts. There's so much tannins in the water that it's staining the snow. Look at the snow up here, it's all yellow. Look at that, look at the difference. Yeah, have a bite of that one. No. Just try it, it's I'm quite right. flavored. That's probably salty. Probably tastes like beaver. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, at, look at the color. The difference. And the trees, oh my goodness. How is that? I prefer the salty snow. <laughs> Gross, did you eat that stuff? Yeah, he did. Oh. He licked it. <laughs> it's just very wet right here, all ice. So worth it. <laughs> well, we're back from our hike. Everybody's packed up. I got another rundown on my hammock. So thanks guys for that. That was a no very good info. And uh, I plan on introducing this hammock a lot more on my channel. I slept better than I have in a long time. It's a lightweight setup. It's very warm. It's a, it's a different thing. You haven't really seen me do too much. And I feel like I've been cheated this whole time not using it. If I had this out here by myself, I would not have set it up properly. I know that. Um, and, and before I've, I've had hammocks that I didn't get good night's sleeps in. So very happy for this opportunity and this experience. And now I have another piece of camping, type of camping to add in my repertoire. So we're all getting out here. These guys got a far drive. And uh, so it's about halfway past the day, through the day now. So 
we're gonna hike on out I hope you guys enjoyed this video I know it was a little bit different but um, yeah check out UGQ Outdoors for the quilts really enjoying to use using their stuff the type of hammock that I used was a dream hammock they don't make those but you can check those out if you're interested in that too um, yeah we'll see you guys soon on the next one say bye everyone Oh, I forgot. Check out Dan Becker Outdoors, too. I almost forgot to say, check out Dan Becker Outdoors. Check, no, it's not outdoors. Just Dan Becker. I almost forgot to say, check out Dan Becker on YouTube. He's going to have a video of this trip, and he's got a lot of uh, cool backpacking tip type videos. Rob Jobinette. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we got, oh, well, actually, we got Dro. <laughs> Dro. Just a Jerome Ruba Newbie. <laughs> hey, y'all. <laughs> Joe Robinette, <laughs> Paul from UGQ, and down there, there he is, Chad, also from UGQ. Thanks to these guys. I'll put a link to Joe's channel in the description below. If you don't know who he is, make sure you check out his video. His video will be down there at some point as well. So you guys are awesome, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.